Hi, I'm Aima, and welcome back to my gardening videos. Today I'm going to give you ideas on how to build an amazing custom trellis for a raised bed that will last you a long time. Who knows, maybe it'll even last you a lifetime. If you've watched our previous videos, you might have seen the older trellises that we've had, and these are sort of identical to them, but there are a few key differences. For one, the spaces in between these are, uh, these cables are a bit thinner, the entire um, trellis is also a bit thinner, and most importantly, it's shorter so that my mom has an easier time gardening. Right here, we're going to be talking about the trellis. So as you can see over there, my dad has already taken down one trellis, and what we've harvested from that trellis is this old cable. So we're going to build, rebuild the trellises, but we're going to do it with some new specifications. First specification, she wants it to be about this high, because <laughs> um, you know, she's not going to be able to reach the, the top levels, if, if you get my drift. But we're also going to make it um, if you look at this, this lattice pattern, you can see that they have uh, about a 9 inch by 9 inch squares. What we're going to be doing is making these squares a bit smaller, probably 6 inches between wires. And our older trellises lasted us uh, about 10 years, but we used pressure treated wood for them, which is rated to last about 25 years. So that's why I say this trellis can last you a long time. Alright, so because of time constraints, I'm not going to be able to show you how to do it completely start from finish, but I am, I am able to give you some ideas on how to do it. So, let's go check it out. Alright, so here we have the wood that we're using for our trellis. Now obviously, uh, it might not be the same as the trellises that you're going to build if you build them, but right here we have stud wood, and it's super light, which means that I can even pick them up with one hand. This is an 8 foot long, uh, or 8 feet long piece of stud wood, and we've actually, or actually my dad, have actually cut the wood in such a dimension that everything works out. So first off, he, he's cut this 75, uh, 75 inch long piece of stud that is going to make up the length of the trellis. And then he's gone over here and he's cut out uh, a 12 inch piece, which is going to be the, um, the width. All right, so between these two columns, he's put this 12 inch piece of wood. And then finally, he's taken the last, um, I think around eight inches of wood and he's put it right here and basically what's gonna happen is he's gonna take the uh, lengthwise piece of wood and it's gonna line up perfectly so that uh, the entire space is filled in and the best part about this if you didn't already discuss if you didn't already tell is that there's no waste basically we use this entire stud and also I didn't mention this, but the columns here, they're actually one stud cut in half. So it's an eight foot stud cut into four feet pieces. So this also has no waste. All right, so for those who are clutching the numbers, that last piece at the end there is actually nine inches because as you know, 75 plus 12 is 87. A 96 feet uh, long piece of wood, which is eight feet. Oh, hey, Simon and Bella. So an 8 feet uh, piece of wood, or 96 inches, minus 87, is 9 inches. So, <laughs> I mean, that end piece right there is 9 inches. Alright, so first off, before we get to the actual uh, dirty work, I just wanted to elaborate that, one more time, that this is all zero waste. And because it's zero waste, because we're using the specific dimensions of this wood, we're not going to have the same dimensions if you use a different type of wood or different dimensions of wood. So. That being said, uh, that's, wh that's why I'm saying I'm giving you ideas on how to build this instead of a how-to because it's not exactly going to look like your, uh, your, your own trellises if you use different types. But anyway, uh, without rambling on, uh, let's get on to the actual drilling of the holes and stuff. So first off, you can see what exactly we're dealing with. So on the columns here, we have holes drilled so that we can uh, string the cable through them. And in order to do that, all you have to do is first measure out where you want to put the holes. Uh, I think there is a six inch gap between these holes. And what you want to do is you want to mark out the places where you want to put the, uh, the holes. So vertically, we have these tick marks. And you want to take a drill right here. You want to line it up. Hold on. Okay. So, 
as you can see, we have one hole down. Now, keep in mind that, all right, so what I, what I was gonna say is that if you're intending to for, uh, align the um, beams like this, then you should drill it a different way. But actually, uh, I wanna make a point about the orientation. So previously, when we were using our old trellises, we actually put the um, lengthwise beams, um, let me put this into perspective. The beams that were going on top, we actually put them in the beam position instead of the uh, joist position. So basically what happened was because it was uh, weaker in this orientation, it would actually bend down over time. So what we did, what we're doing this time, is we're gonna be putting it in the joist position because it has uh, less chance to bend when it's like this. And when you have it in the joist position, what you wanna do is you wanna do the same process. You wanna mark out where you wanna put the holes and uh, you know put the tick marks where you want to put them vertically aligned. And then, here's the different part. When you drill them, you want to go halfway in. And then you want to flip it over. And then you want to complete that one. There we go. And as you can see, all right, so it might have seemed that like that took a lot of time, right? And the drill's actually not on low battery, but it's set to slow right now. So if you set it to uh, fast, um, apparently my dad is able to finish this entire uh, column structure thing here in 10 to 15 minutes so you can tell just how fast we can get our drill so let me find a good piece actually i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do it here just to show how fast this is so hopefully i'm not being hopefully i'm not being graded for this all right so start the timer and uh, now And what was that? I think about 10, 15 seconds to make one hole. And I think this is one, two, three, four, five, six, about 10 to 12 holes. So that should be only about two minutes to do the entire uh, plank of wood. All right, so it looks like it's getting dark outside right now. So we're actually gonna be filming this video in stages. The next stage after this is going to be assembling all the uh, planks. And then after that, what we're going to be doing is looping the cable through all the holes. And I actually have already done that clip yesterday. So here is that clip right now. All right, so as you can see with this work in progress uh, trellis, my dad has already put in the horizontal cables. And you can see that they're very taut, very tight. But what we're looking at right now is the vertical cable. As you can see, my dad has started all the way at this end and he sort of looped it through all these holes, up and around, go back down, and up around. And what he's done is that while he's doing this, uh, if you've ever uh, done weaving, which you totally should, you're basically going uh, on the right side, left side, right side, left side, or outside, inside, outside, inside. And just to demonstrate, just write this through. We're gonna go outside, I mean, it's inside, outside, inside, outside inside and then through the hole there we go and you're gonna need to repeat this a whole ton of times because you're gonna have to keep pulling this wire through all the way until you get to the end all right so before the end of the segment i just want to go back here and make another point about uh, the zero waste of this design now um, each stud here is eight feet long and it's around um, two dollars and 25 cents I think that's the actual price from Home Depot and for this design we've used six of these studs so six times 225 that's around 14 and a half, uh, 14 and a half uh, dollars and then after that all you have to do is use a few screws that could probably be around two to three uh, dollars and then finally is the cable but really the material you use, uh, cable, string, rope, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's up to you. This is basically free to us because we already used it from our previous tra um, trestle, uh, 
trellises. So in the end, this entire trellis costed us less than $20. However, um, not to make any blatant accusations here, but there are certain companies, uh, uh, you know, like Wayfair or Woodpricks that scour the internet and copy people's designs. And some of them even produce them and sell them for outrageous prices, like $200 to $300. And um, I'm not insinuating anything, but I, I feel like some of them might steal this design and they might even sell it to you for like $250. And then after that, even when it come, gets, gets to you, you still have to assemble it. So, this is what the video is for. <laughs> to save you guys some money, and also to help you guys assemble your own trellis. So I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, rate, comment, and subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Ayman. Mentioning um, some designs that might have been copied, we've also done a video on how to make a, oh, never mind, we moved it out, a three-tier garden bed. Um, oh, like that one over there. I'll show you later. Uh, that is very easy to make and you can even make some scrap wood. So, with that, I'll see you there. And I'm Ayman and signing out. Peace. Actually, before I go, let me show you what I'm talking about. So, right here is um, the three-tier the three -tier garden bed that we have. And we're planting our strawberries in them. And we've looked online and apparently some companies are selling this kind of garden bed with similar dimensions for $200. Let that sink in. And with that, signing off. Peace. I mean, of course, uh, you do have to buy uh, tools. But I mean, you could probably even get it done with tools that cost less than $200. Um, even without a table saw, you could probably do it with a regular saw. So I mean, $200 seems like a pretty outrageous price, don't you think?